show you guys how you can save some money by making your own heat blankets or heat barriers uh, from some common materials that you can find instead of buying it from brand name places on the internet and spending like $70 for one little heat blanket. You can probably make 20 of them for the same price if you just do it yourself. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta ask ourselves why we're doing this in the first place. So heat is probably the number one enemy of most electronic components and this especially includes the electronic components inside of your engine bay. Inside your engine bay it gets very hot and it's inherently hot and you're not going to be able to stop that. But what you can do is you can protect certain components such as this what I have in front of me here, this is my starter motor. Uh, you can protect it from heat in a number of different ways and you can prevent them from getting heat soaked and damaged over time. And if any of you guys have heat soaked a starter motor before, you know that it makes the car very difficult to start. And uh, one of the ways that heat is transferred in your engine bay is through radiant heat. And radiant heat is the infrared heat that's coming off of, say, your exhaust. And if you have components that are placed near your exhaust, you need to do something such as reflect that radiant heat away from these components. And a lot of manufacturers have heat shields in there. You'll see, you know, stamp pieces of, of metal. Sometimes it's aluminum, sometimes it's stainless steel, and this is being used to reflect heat. So let's go over what you're going to need for this little project. So the first thing you're going to need, of course, is the item that you want to wrap. Now, if you can't get the piece off your vehicle or you just don't want to, you're going to have to know its approximate dimensions. The next thing you're going to need is a hole punch. I'm using a single hole punch, or of course, you can just use a screwdriver to pop holes if you don't have a hole punch some Sharpies to mark things up. You might want to get an X-Acto knife or a little hobby knife. Scissors up in the corner there. I have a rivet gun up there. You're also going to need some rivets. I, I'm using aluminum rivets so they don't rust. And some backing plates, which are basically just little washers for the rivets, rivets so they don't pull through the, uh, the fabric material. And the last thing, of course, that you're going to need is the material itself that is the heat shield. Now what this stuff is, is basically just thin, you can kind of see it here, it's just fiberglass back, backing with a, an aluminized, uh, essentially a foil cover. And the aluminized cover is what is going to reflect most of the radiant energy and the fiberglass backing uh, is going to insulate the part that you're protecting from any radiant heat that the aluminized um, material is going to absorb and it won't be able to release it back towards the part. So the first thing I've done here is I've cut this material to a more manageable size to work with. So just a big long strip off the, off the roll. And I've placed the object that I am going to be protecting onto the backside of the heat protectant material. Now what you can do is you can wrap one side over, go ahead and wrap the other side over, Get a nice snug fit. It doesn't have to be too tight or anything. You probably actually want it to be a little bit loose so there is an air gap in there. And once you have a size that you're happy with, just go ahead, take your Sharpie and mark off that location. Now, if you do cut it there, obviously the edges will line up but you don't have any overlap. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna want to fold the edge back, probably I'd say about an inch on both sides so that that isn't exposed and it's not gonna fray and look ugly when we do this. And it's gonna leave us with a nice professional looking finish. So if I got one inch here, an extra inch here with say another one inch overlap, I'm looking at adding an extra three inches uh, to this location here. So now that I've marked this, um, I can go ahead, unfold it. I'm gonna remove this and we're gonna measure out an extra three inches, mark that location and make our cut. And of course, the last thing you need to do is measure the depth. Okay, so with the material flipped back over, I have my initial marking here. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna need about three extra inches so I can measure it up, mark three extra inches this way. And then I needed six inches in depth. So again, I can just measure this out. I need about six inches, which is about right there. And I can mark the six inches all the way down. So this is the piece that I had cut out and what I ended up doing was adding an extra two inches of depth. So now it's eight inches instead of six. 
and I changed my mind because I realized that I have two other edges that could potentially fray. So I'm gonna fold each of those edges over one inch as well. And so that's why I ended up with eight inches now. So let's start marking out where we're gonna be folding this thing. So as I mentioned, this is eight inches. So I'm gonna go, sorry about that. So I'm gonna go one inch roughly, fold about here. Let's mark this down. These are gonna be our fold lines. Okay, so all of our fold lines are now marked and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna fold it on the long edge first because when we go to make this thing in a loop, we're gonna loop it and attach it on the short edge. Okay, so like I mentioned, I folded over one edge. I measured the length, it's about 20 inches long. So I've marked off three evenly spaced spots here where we're gonna rivet this through and just secure it and make sure it stays folded over. Then we're gonna proceed and do the other long edge in the exact same way. So I have my first rivet set up and ready to secure this one flange. Now keep in mind, I want you guys to take note of the direction of which I'm going to rivet this piece. So I'm going with the rivet right now um, with the back side facing the inside of the heat shield so that I end up with a nice finished look and you'll notice that I used a backing plate on the front side and a backing plate on the back side so that this thing will be secured nice and tight and it won't pull through the fabric. So now that I've finished folding over the long edges and riveting them in place, you can see on the back side here that the, the edges that could potentially fray will no longer be exposed to the environment. It'll have a nice clean look on the outside and I'm ready to fold over the short edges like so same thing, I'm gonna probably put two or three rivets in there. Same with the other long edge, fold them over, and I will, of course, rivet them together to form a blanket. So with the short edges folded over, I riveted each side of those. You can see the sandwich that I've created. So again, rivet, backing plate, the material, backing plate, and that's the back side of the rivet. And they've been folded over both ways so that you won't see any fraying edges when this thing's installed in your car. And it's pretty much just a simple sleeve. Uh, you'll notice that some of the edges on here on the long side are still kind of lifting up a little bit. I can maybe sew those shut, add more rivets, whatever I want. It's not gonna be a problem and visually you won't see it, but you can always add more. It's not gonna hurt anything. So now let's test fit it over the starter and see what we got. All right, so the fit is great. As you can see, it's wrapped around the starter motor. There's a little bit of play on the inside, which is perfect. So this provides an air gap between the actual material and the starter motor. So you won't have any heat transfer uh, through the form of conduction from this material to the starter motor. And you can of course use this material and this method to cover anything you like. Uh, that includes if you've built yourself a cold air intake box, you can cover that with this sort of thing and it'll reflect all the radiant heat inside your engine bay. You can cover wires, so you can make uh, like a sheath out of this material. And of course, this isn't the only method of fixing it. I used rivets. You can use uh, stitching. You, like I said, you could sew this stuff together. You might wanna get some high temperature uh, stitching, maybe like some Kevlar thread or something like that. And of course you can do it that way. I've seen from companies and I've seen people do it as well where they use industrial strength Velcro. Some of that has an adhesive backing, but maybe the adhesive uh, glue won't stand up to the heat. So again, they stitch the Velcro to this material and then they can wrap it around conveniently rather than having to slide it over. Um, but they can wrap it around whatever component and of course Velcro it shut, you can do it that way. And like I said, there's just get creative with it. It's really versatile stuff and it's super easy to work with. This took me maybe 20 minutes to complete and it saved me a bunch of money. So go out there, do, your, do this thing yourself and save yourself some money and it's a cool project to take on.